Hello community. Today, today we're going to look at Microsoft Research, the latest preprint July 5th, 2023. And Microsoft is scaling the Transformers to 1 billion tokens and beyond where no Starship has ever gone before. So let's have a look here at this preprint. Now, Microsoft says this sequence length to our large language model is one of the last frontiers and they want it to be of unlimited length. Of course, you know that you have a quadratic complexity in the self-attention mechanism of our transformer architecture itself, since each word or each token refers to each other token in a specific sentence. And they invent now a new form of attention, a more simpler form of attention, a more comp less compute intense form of attention. They call it a dilated attention, where they say we can reduce the quadratic complexity to a linear complexity times a specific factor. And this is the way that they say they can scale the sequence length to 1 billion token, and they call this solution long net. Great. Let's have a look at this. If you want to fresh up your skills about self-attention, what you know about this, this is self-attention. Or if you want to have it really easy explained in a very short video, this is the video for you. Now, what is dilated attention? It is rather easy. You have here, like in self-attention, your three tensors. And what you do, you split up those tensors into segments. And those segments have an equal segment length, and the segment length they call W. And each segment is then specified, filled with zeros in the tensor structure, given a specific interval R. I will show you an example in a second. This is it. This is dilated attention. So, the official version again, in practice, because if we do a simplification, we trade in something. You, you notice, you, you can't get the same precision, the same quality if you do a simplification. So what, what is what we trade in with this methodology? So in practice, the segment size W trades now the globality of our self-attention mecha mechanism, the classical self-attention mechanism, for efficiency. While the dilation factor reduces now the computation cost of our squared complexity, by approximating the attention matrix and setting a lot of our elements to zero. So it's faster, easier to calculate. If I would say this in my words to you, I would say, okay, you take here your input sentence and you split your input sentence into smaller pieces. And the smaller pieces that reach out to out far outer segments, you almost set almost all the tensor weights in this to zero. That's it. So you see, not complicated at all. However, it is interesting to see that they start to segment immediately. So here, for example, we have a uh, length of 16 times 16. And in this matrix, you see, you do not calculate now the self-attention from each element to each other element. But given that you now have a segmentation of four segments, four times four, four times four, four times four, four times four, and only in this four times four, so only in the local environment of the segment, you calculate here the complete self-attention. Outside, you leave zeros. So you see, instead of having here a complete sub-diagonal field with tensors filled up to the brim, we have now only this little dark blue here, right at the borderline. So we are missing here everything here. We are missing here the weight tensors. So to compensate for this, they say, okay, let's do an approximation. So we now increase the segment length and we increase the dilated weight. As you can see now, we go from four segments to two segments and then to one segment. And in those segments, we, we put more and more zeros in. We dilate here more and more. So there we have only some tensors and there is almost no tensor at all left in the subdiagonal field. And when you put it all together, you see, you have here our dark blue, four times four. 
And then you have not a sea of zeros, but you have sprinkled in some little values sometimes here, the orange value and here the green values. So you try to fill up this sea of zeros with a little bit of data that are far reaching out. And this is the mechanisms they want to achieve a sequence length of 1 billion tokens. Now you see what we trade in. We trade in a self-attention mechanism where we have a complete uh, sub-diagonal field filled up to the brim with tensors. And we have here this little something and here this little almost nothing. And this is our approximation. So we lose here the global self-attention of our 16 times 16. And we go 4 by 4, 4 by 4, 4 by 4. And then we have an ocean of zeros that we sprinkle with some tensors. And the same thing now explained on another framing. So let's say we have a sequence of 16 tokens. We just, you just saw this, so from A, B, C, D, E, whatever. Now in the self-attention mechanism, each token would attend to every other token. So A would attend from everything from B to P. And now we've dilated, we do not look anymore at the complete center, a sequence in, in one piece, but we divide the sequence in segments. So our 16 token sequence, now we have four sequence with four tokens. So when within A, B, C, D, now I have my standard self-attention, but it is limited from A to D and not, it's not going from A to P. So we have here some simplification. We got some compute time Great. So when updating the presentation, the model would consider the information from token B, C, and D only. And now, as I told you, if we go from segment one now to segment two, or maybe the most far away segment four, we do this with a dilation rate of two. And this means, for example, two, that each token only attends to every second token in the other segments. So A give you here an example, goes not no, to E, F, G, and H, but we have a dilation rate of two, so only to every second token in the other segments. And the higher you go, you see here that you lose precision, you lose information. And if you have a higher dilation rate of four, I mean, yes. So this is now dilated attention, the mechanism behind this. Now, to compensate a little bit for the almost nothing ocean, the ocean of zeros with a little bit sprinkled in values, they say now, okay, we have multi-head dilated attention. And we can vibrate now our tensor position a little bit. You see here, in the first head, we have this position, and then we just vibrate it for one element up, then we have this position, and then we shift a little bit left and right, so each head is vibrating a little bit its positional coordinates to get a little bit a different nuance here from our hidden information. Multi-head dilated attention, as simple as this. And now comes the part where Microsoft amazed me because I thought one billion token. I mean, imagine if they evaluate this system, one billion token in your in your input sequence. This must be really expensive. I know Microsoft has hundreds of thousands of GPUs, but even for a supercomputer center. Eh? And then I read, uh, hey, by the way, if we scale the sequence length of this model from 2K to 32K. So they not, go, they, I mean, they claim a billion and they verify on 2K to 32K. I mean, you know, Claude has 100K already. So, okay. And then they say, due to computation constraints. I mean, Microsoft Research says they have computation constraints. We only scale it up to 32K sequence length. So to have in your title a 1 billion sequence, yeah? And then you do it only for a 32K sequence. <laughs> I mean, Microsoft, I know it is summertime and I know the temperature is hot. I understand that the 
Okay, I understand everything about it, but from 32K. Okay, and then they say, yeah, and then they tested it and they had, of course, the evaluation metric. And then for the evaluation, they said the models are tested with different sequence length. And I said, ah, great. And now, again, ranging from 2K to 32K. So the whole paper is max 32K. And on 32K, they did the experiment. And then I must say they're courageous. No, they're really self-aware. They say, hey, we're Microsoft. So we, we extrapolate from an interval that goes from zero to 32K. We extrapolate the interval 31,250 times to 1 billion. And I must say, wow. I think only Microsoft can put this in a scientific publication. Okay. And then again, the conclusion and here for the long context prompting, I just verified we gradually scale the length of the prompt from 2K to 32K. So it's really only 32K in this billion <coughs> token uh, preprint. <coughs> yes. And they say, so we present long net, yeah, da, da, a transformer that can scale so it can scale the sequence length to 1 billion token but microsoft only did it from 2000 to 32000 token so you might argue uh, there is a little bit left no i mean there is a, a tiny amount of space left but uh, yeah okay it is summertime so again computational complexity our normal vanilla attention you notice we have here this order of complexity, and they claim in this work that they go now for an ND complexity. And if you think that here, D, the hidden dimension here, and the model that they calculated is 768, and here, and the sequence length that they actually verified it, it was 4K to 32K, you see this is now the order of complexity that they say that is so much easier and so much faster. However, please keep in mind, with this simplification, since we do not use self-attention in the complete mathematical precision, but we lose here all these tensors that we sprinkle only with some tensors from the other segments, you lose a lot of information. So, give you another example. You have a token length of 1 billion, what Microsoft claims in this paper. And then long net, let's, it's my assumption, is splitting up this token length here in 10,000 segments. And then, of course, and this is the, the reason why we do this, this splitting up, that we can send now these 10,000 segments to 10,000 GPUs in parallel. I mean, this is the way you think when you work at Microsoft. Yes, I take 10,000 GPUs and here we go, in parallel. I mean, in theory, beautiful. But think about it. What you end up with is a token length here on one GPU from 100K. So, hmm, all of this just to split up here the max token length to send it in parallel to GPUs and have them then some long-term correlation. Okay, everybody decides for herself, for himself, if this is worth it. I'll give you another example. Let's say we have here in one prompt 10 million books. You might say, why would I would I do this in one prompt? But it's not about reasoning, it's just just follow me. And then long net, this new Microsoft uh, is splitting it up in 10,000 segments. So let's say there's one book, yeah? Let's make it even easier. Let's just say one book. But in this one book that you are interested in, maybe you say, hey, long net, summarize this book to this one book to me. I'm not interested in a summarization of one million books on the topic of I don't know what, but just give me this very specific book. Now, since long net is not using the self-attention for all the words in the book, but it is using here the dilated attention mechanism, which segments now here also the book into pieces, you lose information. Now, it is a very sensitive equilibrium how you put here your hyperparameter in 
that with LongNet, you get really a good summarization of the book. Because remember, in self-attention, every word of the book was directly related. So each word was paying attention to all the other words on the, all the other pages of the book. But now, since I have here with LongNet here this, for example, four times four, I lose words. I lose correlations. Therefore, I lose information. Therefore, I lose semantic relation. And therefore, I would be very interested to see here further evaluation test by Microsoft, but not just on 32K, but what they claim. How good then a summarization of a single book is if you have here an average of 10 million books. So you see what you get, okay, on the pro side is if you have long net, now suddenly what you get is also the other segments that are far away that normally we would not have with the self-attention mechanism. Now you also have there, let's say, I don't know how many tokens there are in this book. Now suddenly you could have here one element of a, one, of a correlation. So for example, uh, the system long net would tell you, hey, in book 257, so in this yellow book, there's also a hero named Susan. And in the red book, there's also a hero named Susan. Or there's the place Place de la Concorde in Paris, and there's also Place de la Concorde or wherever or in Rome or any identical factors. So you see, there is a trade-in if you do not use self-attention anymore, but you go to long net. The positive element is you have here this long-ranging connectivity, but it is not completely from zero to 100, but you sprinkle it a little bit with some tensors on some words. So I understand that they want to make it faster, but if you want really to focus only on one book, or maybe you are just looking here for one specific methodology, or just maybe a chapter in a book that explains how to cook a turkey, I mean, it is really interesting how much information you would lose now with LongNet. So the application for this is more or less really focused on Microsoft, Google, and maybe Meta 2026. But of course, I have, to, I have to show you this. I have an AI and that scans here all the transcript for, from daily from the YouTube videos in AI. And I got here this hit from 1 billion token with here super intelligence. And I took here the screenshot. It is, it is funny. So here also the same topic here. And here this, this YouTube channel was way before me. So go to his channel, like him, subscribe to his channel. And I just thought, hey, it's, it's, it's great. And he argues that because now Microsoft here, the work of Microsoft here, with where you have now the, the corpus or the entire internet now, in the input sequence to an LLM, he says, this is a step towards super intelligence. And you know, whenever men dress up in costumes like, what is this, Captain Kirk? No, Captain Picard, this is Captain Picard with, with the, oh yeah, with different color. So whenever men dress up as Captain Picard here, and they say, hey, Microsoft is doing here some super intelligence. So, you know, it is summertime. I wish you a beautiful summertime. Enjoy it. I hope to see you in my next video.